All right, everybody, welcome to the number one TV program in the history of the universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Guard Ship by James L. Nelson. This is book number one in his Brethrens of the Coast trilogy. This came out in the year 2000, and the other books in the trilogy are right here. I will show you. That's the whole trilogy. The Guard Ship, The Black Birder, and The Pirate Round. Let's talk about the covers first, because you know I like cover illustration and graphic design. Looks like the publisher, they used a, a Frank, they used a Frank Shonover illustration for it looks like all of the, uh, this one might be an NC Wyeth. I don't know. I haven't checked it out. But these are definitely Frank Shonover covers. And the design is similar. Got the blue stripe, the red stripe. And then for book three, they just did, decided to abandon the graphic design pattern altogether and just go with whatever the they cared for. And I don't know why publishers do that, why they just, they have a nice looking trilogy here. And then the next cover, they just do it differently. Although it still looks good because they've got the, uh, God, oh, well, now we'll go down here and pick this up. I think the I think the books were objectioning to everything I was saying. I don't know if an objectioning is a word. Objecting. That's what I was looking for. Anyway, enough with that. Let's just talk about this cover specifically. It's really dope. I like it. It's just classic. It's got this classic old illustration by Frank Schoenover. I love the stripe down the middle. We talked, or down the side. I talked about this one having the same thing with red. This one not having it. But this is a sharp looking book. Absolutely sharp looking book. Uh, came out in 2000. Don't know if I mentioned that. I also have it signed. In fact, my entire collection of James L. Nelson books is signed. If we go through my library here, I've got all the James L. Nelson books right there. Let's see, I'll point to them. It's that stack right there. So I've got a few, and they're all nautical adventures, all about um, ships and pirates and all that stuff. It's just a great writer, and I've got them signed, so I will show you. You know I sign, I show off all of my signed books. So let's talk about, oh, and there's maps in this too. There's maps, there's diagrams of the ships that we're going to be sailing in and the parts of the world that we're going to be exploring. So really good job for the overall production quality of the novel. Stars Thomas Marlowe of Williamsburg, Virginia in 1701, the height of the pirate age, where Victorian folks were coming across the sea to America. They still wanted to have their Victorian life of luxuries, but now they're living on the Virginia frontier. Um, they want all the comforts of their Victorian life back in, in Europe, but they kind of also understand they're living in an untamed land, um, unlike anything that they've ever seen before. So we've got that. This is pre-Revolutionary War, um, when America was just kind of a lawless place, ruled by just thugs and cutthroats and pirates and people that had, uh, you know, few scruples, let's just say that. But they're trying to bring this Victorian age era of England and France over to this place, and it's just not quite still. They haven't quite stuck the landing yet. Um, however, they're trying because they build themselves grand mansions and they build themselves grand buildings and ballrooms. And this book starts out in a grand ballroom where um, our main character is sort of in the midst of this ballroom, looking at all the people dressed in their wigs and their finery. Starts out much like um, Patrick O'Brien's first novel, Master and Commander, started out. And I wonder if that was James L. Nilsson's nod to Patrick O'Brien and that uh, Aubrey and Maturin series of uh, 20 books. It's like the classic quintessential nautical series that's out there. I, I just wonder if that was just a nod, like, hey, I'm going to start my book in a, like, I'm going to start my book in a um, grand ballroom, just the same as Patrick O'Brien did. But it's cool. It's cool because we get to meet 
all of our characters in the ballroom, you know, uh, uh, Thomas Marlowe, uh, the Li Elizabeth Tingling, the girl that he's kind of fancies. Um, uh, she's, uh, I mean, Marlowe had just bought her plantation. She, her husband, Elizabeth's husband had passed away and, and she needed some money. And so she needed someone to buy her plantation. And Thomas Marlowe bought that from her. Um, but many other men vie for her attention because of course she's a hottie. And so immediately we go from the ballroom to a duel of honor for the uh, lady because she has been dishonored. And so now we've got this duel going along and, um, well, it just did. And then things spiral out of control from there because then there's a pirate that comes along, Jean Pierre LaRue, captain of the Vengeance, the pirate ship Vengeance, and his uh, Brethren of the Coast Pirates. And it is called the Brethren of the Coast uh, Trilogy. And then we've got other characters like Bickerstaff and King James. King James is the freed slave. You know, when uh, Thomas Marlowe bought the plantation from Elizabeth. He freed all the slaves, and King James is one of the freed slaves that sort of joins Thomas Marlowe's crew, because Thomas Marlowe is also has inherited this, this ship, and, the, and he's been tasked with, like, rooting out the pirates. Um, and I will just read that. I've given a pretty decent description of the book. The writing is impeccably great. The prose is right on point. Um... Everything is described in just the right amount of detail. The dialogue rings true for the era. I absolutely loved it. I will read the back of it just so you can get a little better idea of what's happening. So, the coast of the colonial Americas was fraught with many perils. Its sea lanes, a, haunting a hunting ground for the bloodthirsty predators who brazenly flew the black flag. Only the most courageous or desperate or foolhardy would take up sail in those early years. For who ventured upon the waves would have to contend with the basest greed and savagery of cold-hearted men and submit to the merciless cruelties of the unpredictable waters. Yeah, this sounds bad. You don't want to be sailing around in 1701 America. So, shortly after Thomas Marlowe's arrival in Williamsburg, Virginia, all in that new newfound capital city are speaking his name. Uh, he's, a, he's kind of a rich guy, with the bounty from his years as a pirate. Now, let's talk about Tarlis, Thomas Marlowe himself, even though he's sort of the protagonist and hero of this book. He's a bit of a rake himself. He's not the most, like, noble of dudes, but we love him for his sort of scoundrel ways, like Han, he's like the Han Solo of the pirate world. Han Solo was the Han Solo of the pirate world, actually. Anyway, that's the best comparison I can come up with. with. Okay, so with the bounty from his years as a pirate, a life he intends to renounce and keep forever secret, he purchases a fine plantation from a striking widow, who, a striking young widow, and soon after kills the favorite son of one of Virginia's most powerful clans while defending her honor. But it is a daring feat of remarkable cunning that truly sets the local tongues a-wagging. A stunning move that wins Marlowe's command of the Plymouth Prize, the colony's decrepit guard ship. Uh, you know, but even as the Agnabic Marlowe bravely leads the king's sailors in bloody pitched battle against the cutthroats who infest the waters off Virginia shores, a threat from his illicit past looms on the horizon and could doom Marlowe at his plans. Jean-Pierre Leroux, captain of the Vengeance, a brigand pirate notice, notorious even among the other brigand pirates for his violence and debauchery. So anyway. And along with uh, Sir, uh, you know, Leroux is the Brethren of the Coast, the worst, most baddest-ass pirates on the history of the planet. Great book. Hope I described it well enough to get you interested in maybe picking it up and reading the short trilogy. He's got another series that's five books long, and I showed it to you over there. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my tongue, but you know, that's what Google is for. You can look that up your own selves. Um, and then he's got another trilogy about uh, this ships, ships that are assailed during the Civil War. Anyway, um, Brethren of the Coast, book one, The Guardship. This is a great book. 9.5 stars out of 10.